Now let's talk about different types of business level strategies. When we look at business level strategies, you're going to see that there are really two sets of two factors that build them out. The first of these two sets of two is two types of competitive advantage. One competitive advantage is cost, cost or value. Um, you know, to the extent that I'm going to compete on the basis of cost, it's all down to price, it's down to efficiency. I could also compete on the basis of uniqueness or innovation. To the extent my products cr offer services and provide um, capabilities that meet unique needs of my customers in a way that they believe um, that the that they there's no one else out there who can meet those needs they might be willing to pay more and so cost becomes less of a factor and innovation becomes or uniqueness becomes a more important factor um, competitive advantages uh, and the two elements of competitive advantage are also combined with two types of competitive scope one is broad target that is uh, we go back to the issue of market segmentation large markets, broader consumer segments, maybe all consumer segments would be a broad target. Narrow target would be a very unique narrow segment. It might be culturally al aligned. It could be by age. It could be by economic um, capabilities. Um, it, it, it's just the bottom line is you're not targeting every possible consumer who walks through the door. Instead, you're saying whether it's on the basis of cost or uniqueness, I'm going to reach out to specific customers uh, in a particular segment. These four elements actually combine into five different business level strategies which I'm about to talk about. In the book there's an illustration of, of these five. Um, they are cost leadership, differentiation, focused cost, le cost leadership, focused differentiation, and in integrated cost leadership and differentiation. Let's talk about each of the five. First, cost leadership. Cost leadership is, is really when you develop a competitive advantage because you are the low cost leader in the marketplace. You're able to operate with margins that are greater than all of your competitors. Your competitive scope in cost leadership is broad, so it's broad segment, low cost. This is the classic no frill standardized goods model of leadership. You need to have pretty large um, scalability, and you need to have um, a very strong uh, influence on your supplier networks because you need to be able to absorb supplier price increases uh, and relationship demands quickly. That means you'd have to have a lot of suppliers potentially so they can switch from one to the other to be able to absorb costs. And you need to be in a position that you have negotiating strength to force suppliers to hold their prices down. You need to constantly be thinking about improving your levels of efficiency and cost reduction if this is your strategy. So logistics, operational controls um, are all critical. They tend to be expensive, um, infrastructure rich elements of, of um, leadership and very difficult to replicate. So they become barriers to entry by competitors. Examples of cost leadership are Big Lots and Walmart. Uh, and uh, you know, I think we both know. I mean, we know both firms pretty well, but they are both um, both differentiate themselves from other retailers on the basis of cost, and it's because they have the logistic logistical capabilities and supplier relationships to provide products at a at a reduced price level. The second business level strategy is differentiation. Um, this is where you uh, fundamentally are, um, are creating uh, a competitive advantage to your customer because of the uniqueness and innovation of your product. Broad differentiation is, is, is targeted at, um, at, the customer, at, at a broad range of customers. Um, so in this instance, this is not differentiation to meet a particular need a particular segment need, it's, it's differentiation to meet a broad customer need. It's providing an innovative product in the marketplace that a broad range of customers sees as valuable. 
Target com customers will per perceive the product as more valuable than others because of things that you've done in terms of differentiation on the, in terms of features, and the more features that are um, that appear customized or unique, the more likely that the product will um, will create a competitive advantage on the basis of its uniqueness. Example, and we we spent last week talking a bit about iPod. I mean, Apple, the iPod and the iPad are examples of products that um, have a high degree of differentiation, at least in the near term. The interesting question will be over the long term whether, for example, the iPad as other um, tablet uh, computing devices come into the marketplace, whether it can continue to differentiate itself uh, um, from uh, the range of other options that might be available. But fundamentally today, at least, the iPad has, a, has demonstrated in the last year uh, a strong um, com competitive advantage on the basis of its features, which include uh, both the portability of this um, device that is much more portable than a laptop, but is still more usable than a an i uh, than a phone, uh, you know, smaller pocket size tool. One that has access to a range of uh, applications. The iPod Store. Um, and iTunes offer, um, you know, a range of applications, probably the broadest range of applications potentially available for this kind of tool. So it continues to be a, um, a very competitive product on the basis of differentiation. The next couple are really sort of variations on a theme. So focused cost leadership, is, unlike the broad cost leadership, is uh, where you've decided you're going to Keep costs down, but you're going to focus on a very narrow in, or narrower industry segment. So Walmart is everywhere in the world, practically. Um, but in this instance, um, you would do, be doing something very different from Walmart because you'd meet the cost needs of a particular industry segment or niche to the exclusion of others. So you might be focusing on a buyer group or product line segments or geographic segments where cost might be a driver. So it is very similar to the cost strategy in that it relies on the competitive advantage, but it is focused in that it appeals to a particular segment. The fourth of these is focused differentiation. Again, like focused cost leadership, it is really taking the cost leadership model, I mean the differentiation model, and then defining it for a narrow industry segment. So again, if you if a particular age group wants a particular group of services, uh, narrow differentiation would be we provide those features, those services that appeal to that, to that segment to the exclusion potentially of another age group or another segment. Integrated cost leadership and differentiation is sort of the, as the box in the, 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 the chart in the book shows, is the center of all of these, trying to find the, the perfect balance. It, it, you efficiently produce products with differentiated attributes, so efficiency is a source of your low cost, but it, differentiation is the source of unique value. You need to adapt to new technology and rapid change in the external environment to be able to sort of get the balance right. And you concentrate on two sources of competitive advantage, that is both cost and differentiation. Um, that means you need to be competent in not only your primary activities, that is the product you design, so that's, the, that's where you may get your best advantages in terms of differentiation, but also your support activities like human resources, logistics, uh, technology support so that you can keep your costs as thin as possible while you're developing products that are more, um, more competitive from a differentiation perspective. Um, this is really the heart of where we will be talking. Uh, this is sort of the bridge, as I'll indicate later, between what, I, what has been the traditional strategic analysis, which really is focused on the first four business level strategies, and the blue ocean strategy, which we're going to be talking about today, which focuses on value innovation, finding a p new places to compete on the basis of products that get the mix right, the mix between value and innovation, which is essentially the same as cost and differentiation.